Okay, okay so uh, I'm, I'm, I was told that uh, someone is streaming the game. Yeah, can we turn it on? <laughs> I'm yeah, joking. Can we, can we I'm here to talk to you, not listen to the football, but I am going to probably receive texts yeah, yeah. from people, uh, from Zara. M Arsenal are currently winning. Yeah, oh, God, that's, that's, good. Man that's good. Manchester United. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Well, well, <clears throat> I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> but wink and a nod. That's yes, a, a wink and a nod. <laughs> How are you guys? You good? Yes, yes. yes. Great. So uh, they are very eager to speak with you. Very excited. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any Constantine fans in the room? Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe sort of, kind of. Um, so let's jump right into this Constantine. You have become him. You are him. Synonymous. I think you have rewritten our impression of what this character is in real life. Did you know that's what you were going to be able to do when you signed on? No, no idea whatsoever. I mean, um, you know, uh, just taking on the character anyway in the in the in the first place was a was a, was a huge a huge undertaking because he's such an iconic character and so many mm -hmm. beloved fans out there. And uh, but there's that thing of you just you just kind of like get your head down and get on with it and hope that you can bring something to it that, 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 that people like and, uh, and, and, and I'm, you know, it's amazing as, as I think I said to you before, I'm, I'm still playing the character four years after Constantine was actually cancelled. Yeah, so it's like, it's, I must be doing something a little bit, right? All the way right, yeah. all the way right. Um, and, and I think that's the thing, like you embodied something so fresh and unique. Were you ingrained with like Constantine beforehand, or is that brand new stuff? Uh, yeah, no, I I didn't know much about Constantine before I got the audition, and uh, but as soon as I did get the audition, I read Dangerous Habits, yeah. which is my favorite uh, run of the comic books, and then uh, and then ever since I've just been reading and reading and reading and reading the ones that I'm going to read next, <coughs> which the lovely Kim got me, hey. is the Hellblazer, the last run, isn't it? The, what is it? Um, what? Uh, yeah, it's yes. the, the and, and that's where it ends. There's no more after that, right? So far. So far. So far. Yeah. So um so I'm looking forward to reading those and seeing if there's anything in there that I haven't seen before with Constantine and anything else I can glean from him and uh yeah. I love it. I love it. Now he's a dark guy, but you are very jovial, very congenial. Mm. Why were you drawn to him? Um I don't know. I I, I love his sense of humor. I just th okay. that, that's the thing that I that I that I uh, adore most about him is and I think it works best when he's in a really dark situation and then he you know gives the bird to uh, <laughs> to the to, to Lucifer or you know comes out with a wise crack you know and, and that that kind of that dry cynicism that kind of wit that very British kind of sense of humor is uh is uh, what, what, what I love about him, really, you know? And, 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 it's, and it's fun stuff to play as well. Right. It's really fun. I mean, with Legends of Tomorrow, Legends is a, is a light to show. It is a kind of dramedy, like a, a, a comedy uh, and a drama. I think Constantine uh, adds a level of, of depth to the show, which, um, which, is, which is great, and, and the darkness as well. And, uh, uh, and, and I think that it, his humor works best when, when he's in a really precarious situation and then he has something to, to fight against, you know? Right. Now, it's really easy to like improvise as him as well. I, 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 yeah, I've gotten to that stage where it's like you know I just make stuff up, you know, and just like. And also, I've got a little book. I've got a little black book with loads of little quotes from all my from all my favorite quotes from the from the comics. So if if something isn't quite working with a text or something, or I'll I literally have a look through and see if I can put in one of the lines from the comics. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. See now that right there is dedication right there. That's why you are Constantine. No two ways about it. Um, but speaking of the darkness, okay, so obviously being on NBC and in Legends of Tomorrow, you weren't able to go as dark, but the animated pieces, you've been able to explore a little bit. Yeah. Was, yeah. That, was that a different challenge or? Yeah, it, it is a different challenge, you know. Um, I really, really love doing the animated stuff. And what's great is like watching it as well. I really enjoyed watching it, more so than I enjoyed watching myself, <laughs> you know, as Constantine and watching it back. There's always something where you're judging yourself or you're looking at your work saying, oh, how, how, how can I do that better? Or am I embodying the character in the right way? Whereas with the animation, I can kind of lose myself in it a little bit more. And I really enjoyed that, like the Justice League Dark animation right. and yes. then uh, Constantine City of Demons. And uh, 
And the fact that he like makes out with Los Angeles, it's like pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, as a, as a whole city make out, was Los Angeles a good kisser? Uh, you know, on the animation, you don't get to do it for real, so I, mean, I, so I don't know. I can only imagine. Just kind of project. Yeah. Project it out there. <laughs> <laughs> now, in terms of any sort of voice work, which was more uh, difficult, I won't say rewarding, uh, difficult, the uh, animation stuff is Constantine or for Assassin's Creed? Oh, well, um, I would have to say the Assassin's Creed stuff because it was full motion capture and it was something that I had never done before. Um, so it was like learning a whole, a whole new technique. And, and, and they, they have this, uh, this, this camera, this, this headpiece, uh, this, this, this gear strapped to your head when they re tighten it really hard so it doesn't move. And then they, you know, the camera is like in your face here. Yeah. So you feel like a dog with a muzzle for a little bit, you know? <laughs> and, and, and also the, the headpiece, like after about three hours, just give me such a bad headache, like a bad migraines. And, uh, and that was difficult. And, and it took me about like a week to get into the motion capture thing, you know? Because at first you've got, you know, a room like this, just full of cameras infrared cameras, right cameras, all the way around, and then you've got a, a screen that's bigger than this with your 3D project, projected image, which is just like loads of dots. And you just spend the first kind of days going like, wow, look at that, that's amazing, you know? And, uh, and, then, and then you get into it, and, um, and, then, and then I really started to enjoy it, but the, but the headpiece did, did hurt quite a lot. But the, the, they were working on the technology as we were doing it, so they were making adjustments and as, actually asking us how it, how it was, and, and things like that and, and I, I think now they've really got it down because I've had some other friends who've done some motion capture and said that uh, they, they didn't have those problems but I think it was still in the early stages for right, games right. back then but uh, but yeah it's I'd have to say that it is definitely the motion capture and the voice stuff that I okay. did for Edward Kenway cool. and also I only actually spent like three days in the in the booth doing the voice oh, wow. yeah the rest of it was all like uh, in the room you know okay. all, all motion capture and like but there were so many commands that I had to shout out, shout out you know raise the top sail lads and I blew my voice out completely and I never ever like lost my voice before and uh, and literally we had to stop uh, recording because I was speaking like this I, like, I can't shout anymore Matt, can you do it a little louder no yeah. oh <laughs> voice is gone yeah so we had to stop and then I rested for a few days and then I came back and, and did it again you know that's brilliant that's brilliant this young lady has been waiting so patiently so are you ready to ask your question go for it okay so the Constantine rumors yeah. Back. Yeah. I've heard about these rumors, mm. um, and I can honestly, honestly say that um, I know nothing whatsoever about it. And and I mean that I I I, I don't. I mean, um, I think it's great that I'm still playing this character after so long, and I love playing him. And I'd love to, I'd love to do uh, uh, um, uh, an another show, uh, have another shot at a show of Constantine. Mm -hmm. I think that the character deserves it, whether it's me playing it or not. But um, I'd love to, but I, I literally haven't heard anything. I go, to, I go to LA next week and I'm gonna be calling my agents going, these rumors, what's going on? <laughs> Why am I always the last to know, <laughs> you know? Yeah, That's so. how gifts work, it's a surprise. That's yeah, it. yeah. But, but if you did get to continue, where would you like to? Oh, there's so many different, different, different ways of, of, um, of, of doing a, another Constantine show and uh, uh, I, w I wouldn't want to say directly because, uh, unless it, you know, in case it could influence anyone who's true, thinking true. about about doing it. But uh, but it, it, there's there's so many different angles you you could take. And uh, I, and what I love is you know the, the NBC show is a different style to to, to Legends of Tomorrow. Right. And uh, and it is a, a more darker and grittier and in that kind of Constantine comic book world. Um, but that, you know there's a world where he it could be even more darker and, and grittier and, and more like the, the, the original comics. So I don't know, he's an amazing character and I just, uh, I feel really lucky to, to play him Absolutely. and uh, I hope that I can continue to play him in whatever medium, you know, the, 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 the guy you can drop him in anywhere and he will, he will literally fit in or, or, or not fit in uh, to, <laughs> you know, he'll stir up some conflict and make some drama. So I hope that I'm the one that gets to do that. But I don't feel like, I don't feel any sense of like ownership over the character, you know? I, I think that 
you know, he's beloved by so many people and, and in the, the, the DC world and uh, in comic book characters, you know, people come and they go and I feel right, really lucky to have played the character and I'd like to kind of explore that more. I still feel that, that I've got lots of levels to him that I haven't touched on yet. So uh, it would be great to be able to explore that, but you know, um, I don't feel like any sense of ownership to him at all. I, I think, you know, as an actor with, with these kinds of roles, you've got to be like, well, you're lucky to play it, and sure. you're, but at any time they could recast you, you know? Humbly said. Hopefully that's not, they, they don't do that though. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think, I think you are our Constantine, so we are gonna give you that ownership, whether you wanna take it or not, we're gonna put it upon you. Um, does, that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I had a more serious question because oh. I knew he didn't have. <laughs> what, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, that was a setup. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. okay. But um, I was actually wondering, what is your favorite spell to perform? My favorite spell? Yes. Uh, out of the ones that I've done? <laughs> <laughs> or the ones yet to do? Or ones I'd like to do? <laughs> um, I would say, uh, that's an interesting, interesting one, actually. I've got to say, like, the, the one in the, in the pilot, um, the one in the pilot of Constantine. Yeah. Uh, it's the one I kind of remember the most. I don't know why, because it was like the first episode and, and, and there's that whole bit when I say, you're gonna mess with my life. You know, it's like, yeah. and then he like, you know, he goes for it or I go for it. But um, I, I, would say, I would say that one. And, yeah. uh, and what was funny as well is, you know, we're on a roof, rooftop in Atlanta in the middle of the night, shouting Latin to no one. <laughs> Hesitant down with rain, and uh, and if, you know, and, and it's, it was hard to remember, and uh, and and I was tired, and all these things, and there's lots of outtakes of me kind of like messing it up and like cursing and and then doing like Al Pacino impressions and <laughs> messing around and stuff, and uh, yeah, I can, I can remember that, I can remember that, but that would be my favorite one so far, yeah. Okay. Cool. That Al Pacino thing is coming back. I'm gonna tell you right I now. Know. I'm gonna ask about that. <laughs> Hello. So I'm gonna ask the really nerdy question. Mm -hmm. Who would win in a fight, Edward or John? Ah, in a, in a fist to fist fight, it would be Ken Wade. Just in general. Just no in rules. general, John Constantine. Yeah, I was gonna say, John's not gonna yeah, fight fair. He just like, you know, <laughs> take him out. That's what I love about John is he's actually, you know, he's, he's very powerful. You know, if you look at the legends, and uh, I don't tell any of them this, but he's probably the most powerful legend in a way, you know, right. because he could literally, the, 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 the whole relationship between, um, between uh, Rory and, and him, I always loved, you know, because <laughs> Rory would absolutely batter John in a fight. You know, John's not a fighter. You know, he's uh, you know, and I love that. You know, he's, he's more clever than that. Yeah, he's exactly. Yeah. You know, if 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 he was in a fight, he'd say, "No, mate, no, I don't want to fight." And as you walk away, he'd like hit you in the head or something. You know? <laughs> but um, but we I mean, we were always me and Dom were always joking, going like, "Well, you know, I could just turn you into a frog, mate." You know, and he was like, "That would be really cool." <laughs> you know, in an episode, if you just turned him into a frog. What a way to go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just another one. Uh, in preparation for the pilot, did you watch the Keanu movie? Um, I I had watched the the movie uh, before. I'd right. seen the movie years ago, and I really like I really really liked it. But then, when I was preparing for the role, I decided I didn't want anything to influence me other than the comics. I wanted that to be my primary influence. So I I just like was and there wasn't much time for me getting the job to shooting the pilot. You know, I think it was like two or two three weeks or not even that. One minute I was like you know, fighting to get the role, and next minute I was like in Atlanta shooting. So uh, my main thing was to kind of like just read those comics as much as I could and just kind of let them work on me, you know? I didn't, I, I was looking for, there was a physicality to the character from the, from the pages, you know, from the panels that I kind of wanted to take. You know, he has this kind of like strut and every panel he's got, kind of got, he's got angles, do you know what I mean, with a cigarette and he's like all these different, uh, these different images on, of him. And I, uh, so I, I kind of tried to glean the physicality from that. And what was funny is uh, my good friend, John Joe O'Neill played Gary Lester <clears throat> in episode four. And when he came on set, there's, there, there's this scene when we're in, um, in the museum and Gary has to go and get this sacred dagger and while he's stealing it, John is, puts a spell on the security guard to make the security guard dance. <laughs> and then at the end of it, we, we walk out, right? And 
<laughs> and my mate John, there's this, I said a line to him, I can't remember. I said a line to him and then I walk out. And John just went, what are you doing with that walk? <laughs> because like John has got a strut. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He like walks. I don't walk like that, you know, that's John Constantine. But he was like, what are you doing? I was like, I don't know, but it feels right, man. It feels right for, John, for, for, for Constantine, you know? And, and that, that kind of physicality kind of like stuck with him. Do you know what I mean? The way he's kind of like always standing with his hands in his pockets or he's, you know, he's got he's got angles to him and, and and I kind of felt as well that you know every single image is almost like a panel in the comic book you know you want to kind of and, and that was a really interesting kind of way of working actually is with the physicality of the character anyway is taking that that, that from the comics which is cool that's brilliant imagery building that's fantastic yeah it was cool yeah and I think as well like with the NBC show it's slightly different for, for Legends, but the way they shot it as well, it was very comic booky, like the angles, the lighting, everything. I almost felt like every single shot was like a, 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 a panel out of the comics. With, and, then, and then what was interesting is when we were doing Legends and I started watching the stuff back, I was like, oh, they're not using those like low angles and those like tilted angles. And, and I felt a little bit different. I was like, John feels a little bit different. And it's because, the, the angles of the, the, the camera work was slightly different, you know, because the style of the show was different. So then I had to adjust a slight, a slightly to that, you know, and kind of, because I didn't want John to kind of like stick out in a way where, you know, John's like this, you know, walking down, he's like this, and then everyone's like, what are you doing? What, what is that? You know what I mean? Like, Constantini, what's um, yeah. up? So, so there was a slight, I, I pulled back a little bit with the physicality in, in, in Legends, but, um, but it really did lend itself, I think, to the style of camera work that they did on the NBC show. Nice, nice. Yeah. Hello, dear. Hello, I've got dear. Two questions. Okay. Uh -huh. um, the first one: Do you find yourself in, in your everyday life somehow slipping into John? <laughs> Um, do you know what's funny is sometimes like when, when I'm about to like read a comic or when I'm prepping something I'll go like oh come on Johnny boy come on you know like <laughs> as, he, as he talks to himself do you know what I mean like or if I haven't played him for a while and then you've got to get back in there's always a little period where everyone thinks I'm nuts like all the all the other actors or all, all the crew think think I'm nuts because I'm like pacing up around like talking to myself like get, trying to get a, the physicality of him back into my body do you know what I mean so uh yeah, sometimes. <laughs> All right, second question. Anything fans can do to somehow get you back? Well, if I knew the answer to that, then... Um, Tell us what to do. I, I don't know. I don't know. What um, do you I, want us to do or not do? Let's well, do I, I mean, I think you, you, everyone has just been amazing. Do you know what? It's like, I've said this before, and like, when you do a TV show and you're the title of character, and that TV show is cancelled after 13 episodes, normally it's got something to do with you. And what was great, uh, you know, it was, I was really disappointed when the show got cancelled, but what was great is it wasn't my fault. Right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It wasn't because, like, I really messed it up. And, and that, that would be a lot to take, do you know what I mean? Because, you, you know, I think with everything, you put your heart and your soul into your work, and, and sometimes it doesn't go so well. But um, what was great is even though the show was cancelled, there was so much support from the fans for me playing the role. And, um, and even though Legends, you know, is a different, is a different show, and it's a different... Um, um, it's the same character, but you know, it's it's slightly more, um, you know, it's 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 a, it's the same DNA of the character. The way I see it is that it's like John Constantine is termed up in another comic book, right? You know, and then he can go back into his own comic book run. Right. But it's the same John Constantine, but it, it it's just a different style of comic book. Do you know what I mean? So uh, you adjust the style somewhat, but keep your foot in the DNA of the character. It's like, okay, you can't, I can't smoke on the CW as much. Do you know what I mean? Not even as much as on the NBC show. And that's frustrating for me, but you know, if, if I just kept on being frustrated by that, I, I wouldn't be able to do as, hopefully as good a job as I want to. So it's like, okay, well, you know, this, in the Hellblazer com uh, comics, he does smoke, but when he pops up on this comic book, he doesn't. He doesn't because it's for a slightly different audience. But, you know, we all know that John Constantine, you know, in his own co comic is, is smoking his brains out. So that, that's the way I kind of look at it and, it, and it. and it helps me to kind of get over those frustrations of not being able to play John in the 
in in uh, in in the real sense of the of of the character that I love from the Hellblazer comics, and it's also fun as well because it's seeing John in a different light from a different angle. And once I look at it like that, it becomes a, rather than like, oh, this isn't the John Constantine that uh, you know that everyone wants, or or the or the real dark, tortured, you know, uh, chain smoking, alcoholic demon hunter. <laughs> yeah, but there's there's a there's an even though all those things are still in there, there's another element to it as well. And on Legends. I find that everything we did on the NBC show, um, you know, we were taking original storylines from the comic books and then making our own. And you know, we've gotten into territory in Legends that that when you know we're, I'm discovering new things about John as well that are being made up, and that's the exciting thing, you know. And there's still all of this wonderful material to be explored, and that would be the great thing is to be able to go and explore some of that that material. Um, in, a, in, a, in another way on its own show. That's but. brilliant, that's brilliant. John Constantine is a considerate lover, making sure that when he's visiting another person's <laughs> place, he's like, I'm gonna play by your rules, not mine. That's so sweet. Well, that's not really John, though, is it? Well, <laughs> John, I think always he's just, with a plan. just he's pretending. Always with a plan, always with a plan. Yeah, yeah. With a plan. Yeah. I'm gonna play by your rules until I'm not. Yeah, exactly. And that's John. Yeah. 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 Hello. Hey. I have uh, two questions. Uh, first one, I remember seeing the Helmet of Fate in the first episode, I believe it was. Yeah. I was wanting to know, is there a, was there like, was there gonna, was Dr. Fate fully gonna be in the show at all, ever? I don't know if he was gonna fully be in the show, but I know they had plans to, to, to try and, they, they had plans for him. I don't know what they were, but, um, and we didn't get there, sadly, but that was an Easter egg planted, bang in the pilot, and that helmet was awesome oh, dude it good. was awesome i mean i stole some stuff from the mill house <laughs> and i wanted to steal that helmet but they would not let me steal that there was no way they would give it because that was awesome like every time i went in there there was so much so many cool easter eggs from the comics in that in that mill house and i'd just be looking at the helmet go wow and maybe you know that's you know that's what john did didn't he but um <laughs> But yeah, they were. They did. I think they did have plans to to bring that in. I know what they were going to do is fill out the uh, the Spectre's storyline, nice, and, nice. and make Jim Corrigan become the Spectre. Oh, that would have been I brilliant. think that's that's one thing they had planned uh, amongst others. But uh, but we never got there, sadly. You know. And the other thing is, is like I always wanted to know what happened with the Brucaria mm. and with Manny. You know. Mm. Yeah. Maybe Who knows? Maybe one that. day we'll find out. I'm hoping that we do. You know. I agree. Yes. Uh, second question. So, if you could have your uh, your character like battle another character, villain or superhero, who would that be? I, I've, I've, I've come I've come back to this a few times, right? It's interesting, but like the Joker. Mm. <laughs> I'd love to see what would happen oh if John God. Constantine met the Joker. I could, do you know what it is? Is most most of the characters that um, that, that you think of, I can kind of. I can kind of get what would happen. Do you know what I mean? But I don't know what would happen with John and the Joker. John and the Joker. They, 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 you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what would happen. It would be a really interesting mix. Has, has there ever been like a comic book run where they've come across each other? No. I don't think there has. I've there? literally just checked out of this panel trying to figure out what that story know, would be. Right? Oh my God. I know. I don't know. It's the most interesting kind of dynamic for John Constantine that I can think of. All right, I just wrote this in my head. It's, it's titled, No Laughing Matter. <laughs> no Laughing Matter for the Laughing Magician. Co-written by... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. No Laughing Matter for the Laughing Magician. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I actually know Bendis and Dan no DiDio. No Laughing so Matter for the Laughing I'm Magician. Gonna... That's a great jo standalone John Constantine no, but, comic. Uh, by the way, guys, Matt Ryan wants to write that. Yeah, I'd be Make up it for happen. that, man. Make it happen. Wow. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Yeah. Ooh, that's got that's, that's got me that's got me going. There's so there's so many great things with John that I'd love to explore, man. Do you know what I mean? I get so excited about it when you know little things like that happen. You're like, oh, fuck, I want to see him do this yes. and do that, and then I'm like, and I want to play it. Yes, it'd be great. There's so many different things like that, and I that, that's what I love about this character, and that there's so much so much to be done with him, you know. And one more quick one. Yeah. Uh, celebrity that you have not worked with yet that you would like to work with? There's, there's, there's lots of them. As an actors, like you know, Daniel Day Lewis is probably my favorite oh, actor to work with him. Um, Anthony Hopkins, um, Gary Oldman, uh, yes. you know, 
there's 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 so many. I, I you know I'd love to work with Robert Downey Jr. That, like there's 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 loads of loads of, of of people I know that I'd I'd love to work with and learn from as well. You know I've learned some from some from some great people, and I always find that as well when you're working with someone that you know everybody teaches you something. And if you're open and, and uh, to, to grow and learn, you know, you bring what you have to the table, but everyone always has, has something to teach you if, you're, if, you can, if you can listen, you know, so, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Hey, man. Uh, so when you were brought over to the CW, what was it like working with uh, Stephen and Mel uh, for the very first time? It was great, man. I had met Stephen when we, well, what's interesting is The Flash and Constantine were launched at the same time, right. and we did San Diego Comic Con, and then it was me, Gra and Gotham actually, me, Grant, was it Gotham as well? Yeah, me, Grant, Ben, and Stephen. There was like four of us. All, all sat in the middle of the panel, and, and Stephen was kind of like hosting, hosting it as well, or hosting part of the night. And uh, he was just the most graceful. He, you know, he'd been doing Arrow for a little while, and he's kind of like he, he Arrow started the whole thing on the CW, didn't it? And he was just, he was just really graceful, man, and he was great to work with as well. And uh, and we become friends, and he's, you know, I, I know that all you guys like love him dearly for all the work he's done uh, as Arrow and all the other shows that have come out of that. And he's a he's a wonderful human being, yeah. And it was it was great. And what was great as well is I thought John was done, and each part of this journey, I've always thought it was done. It's like, okay, they canceled the show. It's done. Arrow. Okay, it's done. The animation. Okay, it's done. <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow. Okay, it's done. A series regular as Legends of Tomorrow. Okay, it's done. Rumors of a new TV show. What happens next? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm hoping, but, yeah. but at every, every part of the journey, I thought it was done. And, and what was great was, you know, there, there was a moment actually when, when we were on set and uh, I had let the character go. I was like, it, it's done, I'm gonna get on with my set, get on with my career. And, uh, and then for the first day on set, I was just like walking around like this. Okay, come on, Johnny, come on, Johnny, where are you, where are you? And Steve was like, you're a bit bonkers, aren't you? He was like, yeah, mate, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was just like, it was really funny because I was just like spending all this time trying to get back into the character. And then I found him and it was all in the walk. It was all in the walk, getting that strut down, you know? Um, but he was great, man, and it was so great to kind of, play the character again you know I was like this is awesome I, I, on that show and when the show was cancelled he was great he tweeted about you know trying trying to you know bring it, back, uh, yeah. bring it back and all that stuff and he's just been a real big supporter and I'm really grateful to him yeah awesome. that's great to hear thank you thank, thank you me. hello hi. hi so I was in London last week and I met Jess and Tala and they told us on the legend set there was a shame bell, and I was wondering if the shame bell ever rang for you, or if there was any other funny story you have from the legend of tomorrow. Set. Shame bell. Shame bell. What were they? What, they were in London. Why didn't call me? Where were they? <laughs> was, there, was there a comic con in London? Yeah, there was a comic con. Oh. Now oh, they don't call me, do they? Right. Mm. Well, mm. we'll be talking to them when we get back to the Wave Rider. If we get back to the Wave, wave Rider. When? When? Um, uh, the shame bell. No, 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 no. I've never been shamed by the bell. No, no. Other places maybe not. But you know, bell. there's that scene when I was doing like naked yoga. You know, it's like why do they have? A, they had me doing a naked chicken dance and Constantine covered in blood. And then they're like, can you do some naked yoga? I was like, oh god, guys, I haven't been working out <laughs> you know like i'm playing john constantine he's not really a, like you know but um that that was that was kind of funny i think for a bit because um you know you just gotta like have no shame and go for it you know but i, the, I gotta say is like that set is the most happiest set i've ever been on everybody is just awesome like they they the, the legends are legends man they are I had such a good time on that show like really and and if i get to go back then 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 i would i i would relish every single moment of it because they're all wonderful human beings and and they're all consummate professionals and everybody has a laugh as well because that show is bonkers Absolutely bonkers. I mean, episode episode one of season four was 
a killer unicorn, then you have a fairy godmother, then like John's like talking to a cat. It's like, it's just bonkers. And, and never have I kind of come across a show where every episode you get, you don't know what it's going to be. Normally you're like, okay, who's the demon this week? You know, or you know, when you, you open it and you're like, what is a giant octopus with a three-breasted lady? With, what are you doing in that office in Los Angeles, writers? You know? Uh, and it's just like, I, I love the show for that reason. And I mean, like everybody involved in it, like embraces that, uh, that, that, that craziness. And it's just, it's a real, real joy. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I'm glad to hear that you read the comic books. What did you think of Constantine being a bunny in the Bombshell series? I, I, I don't know that one. What, oh, what, what amazing. is that? So there's a bombshell series of DC Comics, and it's all of the DC women set in like World War II, and they all have the really cool costumes. You you should definitely check it out. It is yeah. a series. I mean, I haven't read the, I haven't read them all. I haven't yeah. read them all. There's there's a bunch I haven't read. Yeah, and check that series out. Yeah, it's very entertaining. But yeah, he's he's a bunny, and that he gets turned into a bunny for a large part of that series. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. let's have a look. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Right there. Yeah. Pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's the tonic. It's the tonic in it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I never, I didn't know that. I did not. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is the thing. And I've read about, like, God, about 250 of them. 200, well, I don't know how many. I think there's like 300 of the original Hellblazer. Right. And then they went into Co the uh, Constantine. And then they went into Constantine the Hellblazer. And then the Hellblazer. And I've read, like, a bunch of them. And I'm still reading them. And, and I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen before I start diving into. The other ones, and the, possibly that yeah, one as well. See. That's cool. Bunny Constantino, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. You see that on an that's episode, cool. he's going to wear bunny ears, and we're going to be like, I know what that is. <laughs> Next time I'm here, you're going to ask me that, because I'm going to have read it, OK? There you go. How you doing? Hey, um, man, I'm good. Simple question. Uh, in the last crossover, we saw that some of our characters switch powers. Who would you like to play, or who would you have liked to switch with, if you got that chance? Mm. Ah. Mm. Me? In, in, in Legends, or just anywhere? In anywhere. I mean, because what it was is Flash and Arrow and, and switched. Arrow switched, yeah. So it would be nice to see who would you get, or who would you have Who would Constantine playing? get? Constantine would probably, Constantine would probably get someone like the White Canary. You know? That would right, be pretty right. cool. But, uh, oh yeah, that would be cool if John and Sarah switched. Um, but like, I'd, I'd like to have Superman's powers. Yes. <laughs> just to fly, yes. you know? See how the Boy Scout uh, works out in the, in, the, in Johnny's trench coat. <laughs> Can you imagine like Superman in John with, with, in John's positions? Like, why am I smoking cigarettes? <laughs> he like smokes like so hard. He's like, oh, yeah. it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. I like that. Hello. Hey. Um, I was just wondering uh, with Legends or when you were doing the voice work for the uh, Justice League Dark, who was your favorite person to work with, like in or out of their character? Um, with with uh, what I loved with the Justice League Dark animation is um, having John interact with characters that we never got to touch on on the on the TV show and and on Legends, like um, like Dead Man and right. Batman. Like I just love that he's always calling him Batsy <laughs> and like taking the Mickey out of him and you know call Superman the Boy Scout and like you know why are you wearing tights. You know, but, and he's like, I love that, but also Zatanna as well. Yeah. That relationship, you know, it's uh, that that was great to play out. Even though I was just doing it to myself, there wasn't a physical <laughs> Zatanna in the room. <laughs> um, but that that was really interesting for me to kind of like um, to flesh out that part of the character that I hadn't before. But in terms of just actors, like I couldn't say one person. What's great about Legends is every every character is so different. And then all the actors are so different as well. And the way that in the series, they, uh, in the season, they kind of pair you off with different people at different times. You get to work with each pe person and, and then explore different parts of your character in relationship to them. Like the relationship I really liked uh, was the relationship that John developed with Ray. You know, and that goes even further in, in, in the second half of the season when we return in April, and that, that's great. And obviously his relationship with, with Sarah and then with Zari and, and with, with Rory as well, that's, that's an interesting one. And I, and I just like loved exploring that, those, those relationships and those dynamics, but then also working with those actors as well because they're all so different, but all 
so lovely in their own ways and um, that, that I, couldn't, I couldn't single anyone out at, at all really because they all bring their own unique kind of craziness to, to, to their roles, you know, and their characters. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Cool. <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask you a question that might require a little bit more of a poker face from you, okay? Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, that's right. I'm uh, terrible. I always give stuff away. <laughs> shipping is, is super heavy in, in uh, you know, on shows right now where people are putting different shipping? folks together yeah, as a relationship. So we call it shipping. Oh, right. Yeah, right? Oh. So to make sure that, okay, interesting. poker face so you don't give anything away, but is there any character that you think would be interesting to ship with John? to put together romantically, poker face, keep holding, keep holding. <clears throat> uh, or have you heard of anyone suggesting, like, wouldn't it be cool if these, you know, John and this person got together? Do you know what, I, do you know what? <laughs> no, there, there's, there's a lot, yeah. I yes. mean, like, you know, what, what, what's great about um, uh, the, the, the season we've just done now is we've seen John, who, um, is notoriously a bastard, pardon yes, my language, true. but you know, um, people Stop around him die. But we see him, you know, that he actually did fall for someone, you know, mm -hmm. and that and that he cared deeply for them, and that really affected him. And uh, and I really liked exploring that 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 part of him. Um, there's, I, I, it's hard with John. I don't think there's many people who could who can get close to him. True. And, and uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He I has know. a word. Do you know? Do you know what? Do you know one one relationship that I really want to want to, to want to explore more is the one with him and um, and Rory. Yeah. Like I just think it's like it's got the it's got such wonderful comic and dramatic potential. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think they would be the best of buddies. Oh yeah. But in order to get to being best of buddies, it's like, you know, they would, they would kick each other's ass, <laughs> you know? Completely. But it's just funny. And me and Dom just started coming up with these little things where he keeps on calling me Weasel. <laughs> and then so I just kept on calling him different ways. Yeah, you wombat, you womble. You know, just like kept on like just each time calling him a different name. And I kept on calling him Mrs. Rory as well. So all right, Mrs. Rory. And then they, they actually had to cut that because they didn't think it was uh, appropriate. Uh, appropriate, you know, and I was yeah. like, but it's it's John's humor and it's a joke. I I, right. I didn't quite get that, but um, uh, but I love that dynamic. Yeah. I really do love that dynamic, and it would be great to explore that more. That's awesome. <clears throat> That's awesome. Uh, I just want to give you a quick update. I do believe it is halftime, yes. and uh, wow, yeah, yeah Arsenal's yeah. still up. Oh, but, well. but we still got forty five minutes to go. I was gonna say, once you get back to watching. Let's go, we're going. I'm yeah. ready. Um, okay, Some so magic spell. <laughs> keeping the, the poker theme going. Okay, so uh, the DCU has a lot of uh, magically based characters, mm -hmm. right? So say you all got together to play poker. Let's say it's John Constantine. Yep. Obviously, our favorite in the room, correct? Yes. Yeah. Zatanna. Yeah. Right? Spectre. Dead Man. And Mixia Spitlick, right? Yeah, that's right. I went there. Um, <clears throat> how soon does John take all of their money? And you're on it. He draws it out. Yeah, he's gonna wait. He draws okay. all right. it out. All right. He Long draws game. it out. Yeah, Long because game. he likes the, he likes the game. Okay. You know, it's all okay. about the game for him. Oh, I like it. I like yeah. it. That's <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't just like take all that money, but he would just he would like you know he'd lose a little. You know, just a little. Just a little. He might even team. lose the game. Mm. To come back and play another game mm. with higher stakes. It's what what's at stake, and it wouldn't be about the money either. Right. It would be about what. What, what, what thing am I going to get from you then, okay? What magical item are you going to put on the table or something like that? And he'd probably lose four or five games to get to the ultimate one, you know? Because he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a wheeler and a dealer, isn't he? This is literally how we're going to start this story off with him versus the Joker. This is, it's going to start this <laughs> poker game, right? Right? Listen, I'm, I'm wheeling and dealing right now. Oh, and the way, cool. that he, the way that he does this is he puts down a Joker, and everyone's like, what's that about? And then that's how the story starts. Let me tell y'all a story about this one time I went. <laughs> I'm a writer, by the way, so this is what I do. Dude, yeah, let's yeah. write it. I'm with you. I'm let's with you. Do it. Let's pitch it to them. Why not? Absolutely, it's gonna happen. Um, but no. Uh, <laughs> what what I also wanted to know was in terms of the uh, iconic DC locations, right? Uh, the House of Mystery is one that is incredible. Yes. Would you love to see that more so in the real world and, and showcase that? Yeah, that would be really cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool. Are you guys yeah. familiar with the House of Mystery? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, that would be really cool. You you got me thinking. I'm now, sorry. Dude. I'm sorry. sorry mate. You just I'm, I'm, I'm on a thread there. here. I'm like that. I'm like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that would be really cool. And um, uh, it would be it would be great to to have him interact with Zatanna as well. And uh, 
and and Swamp Thing mm -hmm. and uh, Swampy's got his own show coming. Swampy's got his own show. Listen, I that mean, would be a cameo. You know, the thing is, is like, love. you know, wherever they start from, they've got to start, you know. But John Constantine was born on Swamp Thing. Yes. yes he Eventually, was. he has to be on mm -hmm. Swamp Thing. Mm -hmm. And I just hope it's me. <laughs> Let's and all put that out there and just project, project that. Absolutely. Uh, we've got about maybe 10 minutes. Does anyone else have any questions? If you want to sit in your seat or go ahead. Oh, yeah. I'll go to the mic. Oh, you can ask them. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Sure. Less cardio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, on Legends, we did see John in a relationship with another man. And I know that that's something that has been kind of a noise the fan has been making for a while, is actually seeing John being represented as a bisexual character. So I'm sort of wondering how did that come about? Was it like just the writers went okay, or like was that something that you talked to them about, or like? Um, no, it was it was very much um, them. You know, I think that uh, it was great that I think that they embraced that that right. side of it, especially on Legends of Tomorrow, which is such a diverse show, and I think it's it really kind of does lead the the, the way in the in the DC shows in that in that in that sense. Um, but I, I thought it was great. You know, uh, they they took the st uh, the brief storyline from the Art of the Deal, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, Made uh, Desmond from Oliver, who's in that in that in that run, and uh, and it was great to be able to explore that. And I know there was a little bit of noise made about it uh, on the TV show, like why isn't he bisexual? But like we were starting from way back. I mean, we right. did a Feast of Friends, which is one of the first one of the first comics, you know, to be done. And I think we would have got there eventually. But also, like John didn't have a relationship with anyone in that first right. thirteen episodes. Do you know what I mean? I thought it was setting something else up. But also as well, you know, in terms of John's sexuality, John John's not he, just bisexual. He's like he doesn't have sex with anything. <laughs> if it's a demon or you know, uh, well, not anything, but but do you know what I mean? He's Kinda. he's he's not he's not fussy in that way, and I right. think that that's something that's really liberal about him, you know. So we could get that story arc where he helps Swamp Thing have a kid. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, well the interesting thing was, was, it was like, now my bum was never really shown, but if it was, would he have the tattoo on his on his bum? Ooh. And I was like. If he does, that means it's already been done. <laughs> That's right. So I was like, no, let's not have it so that it could be done. Yes. <laughs> Future stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, actually when you're talking about representation of bisexuality in media like that, it becomes difficult because then the risk is uh, a suggestion that bisexual characters are promiscuous in order to show the way that their sexuality is so fluid. And that's also a very dangerous mm. place uh, you know, of a stipulation because how do you show that a person is truly bisexual without engaging with you know, multiple genders? So that's, that's really a difficult thing. I wonder if that's something else that they would want to not do. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I think that like, what's great about playing a character like this is you know, with writer, when you're in such good hands uh, with, with the writers as well is you know, you, you try to be true to the character. Right. And it's not so much about me as an actor making a statement about something. You know, it's about me being true to the character. And it's like, whatever character you play, that's, that's, that's my job. Right. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, you embrace all, all, all aspects of that character, you know? And, and, and I love that about John. I love that about John, is that he has all these multifaceted sides to him. Do you know what I mean? It's great. Of course. We got only five minutes left. Yes, sir. There's a couple of great authors that did good runs in the comic books, like Moore and Edison. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to any of them as to what they were thinking while they were? I haven't. No, I would love to. Uh, I'd love to to meet Alan Moore and oh, all, 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 all like those guys. The only person I did meet was uh, was was Ray Forks, uh, and I met him at a convention, and we just sat down and like drunk whiskey and talk like that. I don't even know what we talked about. But it was great, and he's a dude, you know? And I loved it. But no, I never really got the chance. I think when I was doing the show itself, you know, at, things happened so fast, and the next minute you're shooting, and you're working 15 hours a day. And I was still reading the comics as well, so I always had a comic book with me, and if I was ever stuck, then I'd just like look at a panel, and there'd be a physicality that would jump out at me. But, um, and I also, I used to, be working all day, and then you'd have to work on your script for the next day, especially if you were speaking Latin, Aramaic, Arabic, and all those things. I'm like, God, I gotta learn a new language. Um, 
But I used to like try and read a little bit before I went to bed every night. But then I had to stop because I was just getting all these like nightmares of demons and stuff before I went to bed. And I was like, it's probably not really good for my mental health to be reading it before I go to bed. And there has to be as well a little bit of time where you kind of decompress from everything to be able to come back to it fresh in the morning. Otherwise, you know, you can lose yourself a little in a way that's not good for the character or anybody. But um, and I think that, you know, if there was more time in preparation or if it was like you were, you were doing a movie, then I would have loved to have made that part of my research and kind of gone about to do it. But there was never the time at the time. And then the same thing with Legends. It's like, okay, we're doing Legends, whoop, straight back into it. And then I'm trying to pick back up where I left with the character because I love the character so much. But when the show was canceled, I stopped reading the comics because... I was disappointed, and I right. didn't want to like come across these great storylines and go, oh, 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 we're never going to get to do that, you know? So at each interval, I've kind of put it down, put, put the, the comics down, and then picked them back up, you know? But, um, yeah. It's a great way to keep fresh, though, which is awesome. Yeah, I think so. Last question, yeah. really tricky question for you. Oh, okay. So if your character would have been on Smallville, what, do you, what would you have seen your character doing? Oh. Terrorizing high schoolers, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, true, true. Just she, she was? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. I'm learning more from you guys than I learned yeah, from just, any, any of my research. She was, Zatanna was on yeah, Smallville? Yeah, yeah. Who played her? Sarinda Swan. Yeah, there we go. But I don't know if they ever went abroad, so they never went to England to meet John Constantine. That's how we're going to clean that up. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't watch all of Smallville. I watched a little bit of it when, there you go. when I was younger. But We're going to write that one in Smallville, the Euro trip. <laughs> right. I'm going to go and look this up and yeah. uh, get into that. I'm going to read that comic. I'm like, I've got my work cut off me. That's great. Um, I, I would say probably he'd want to make out with Supergirl. <laughs> you know, I can introduce you. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just saying I did that panel. Yeah. It does hurt. It does yes. hurt. Are they allergic to magic? It does. It does some things. Yeah. To it, but uh, some red crypto in the room set the it. mood. You never know. <laughs> you know. Maybe it only hurts under the yellow sun. You go somewhere else. They're fine. You know. Has that, have any of you guys seen Krypton? Yeah. I saw a couple episodes of that one. Is, is it good? I haven't seen it yet. My friend Cameron actually plays plays uh, the guy in it. We did a TV show uh, called The Halcyon. Nice. In 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 the UK, and that's when I first met him. And then I bumped into him at Comic Con. I was like, "Dude, you're doing Krypton with David Goya, who did right. Constantine, and uh, and and Cameron, one of the writers on Constantine." I was just like, "I'm so happy for him, you know." It's uh, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. It does look good. It does look. It, uh, it looks, good. It looks and, good. And also Emmett Scanlon, who played Jim Corrigan, who's yes. going to become yes. the Spectre, actually plays Lobo. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And once you touch DC, you never leave. All right, so before we get out of here, <clears throat> you mentioned earlier about an Al Pacino impression. Oh, no. No. That's only when I'm drunk. Uh, no. No, I'm sober. Could you, could you say goodbye as Al Pacino? I, 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 I couldn't at all, no. Are there, are there any other impersonations that you are willing to do? Um, I, I've never been really good at impersonations, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to say, I what? think we all disagree with that. Oh, look at you yeah, guys. We all disagree with that They one. got me. But, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hound you about this. At some point, I want to hear this Al Pacino. If he wants to hear my, I will. I, okay, I'm going to say... Uh, Do it. What, yeah? Do it. What? I can't hear you, son. <laughs> Let's step outside. Yo, that was actually really great. I have what some... No, oh, no, okay. <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't undersell that. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, sweetie. How are you? Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen. we have Holly Marie Combs in the back. Yay! How lovely. Woo! You guys aren't leaving, are you? <laughs> and also, I ladies am. and gentlemen, in the corner, we have Mark Jules Wright. Yay! Yay! <laughs> and of course, the ever incredible art. He um, is. Wizard World Cleveland, make some noise for Mr. Matt Ryan. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Love you all. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. You can subscribe here, so subscribe to the channel. There's more videos off to the left. And Mr. J says, don't forget to ring that bell button for more notifications.